Okay, so this is the same exact site that showed uh, previously it was a completely mode buffer. This is a completely restored buffer. And uh, we didn't use any landscape architect on this. We did use a local landscaper to add sort of a, a rock edging around it to give it a little extra aesthetic uh, bang. And because it is in the middle of a private school that has to have a certain, you know, aesthetic like your church is seeking as well. And this is a faith-based elementary school as well. Uh, here's an example of how the buffer uh, uh, is edged along the, uh, a playground, a children's playground. And uh, the Metro approved or at least uh, similar uh, repair and buffer signs. And those are all native plants. This particular type plant's called a coral berry. It colonizes on its own, so it saves you a lot of money as well. So, okay, so we have a motion uh, now to uh, to clarify the previous motion that was uh, stated at our last meeting. So, yes. First, let me um, tell Mr. Johnson thank you so much for coming back, and I I hope that <laughs> that the examples provided will help the church out. So again, thank you for coming back for uh, an explanation of the motion. I appreciate that. So um, let me rephrase the motion and uh, for clarity of perspectives. To the extent that there is any inconsistencies between the way the motion was phrased at the September the 2nd meeting and the current motion being adopted by the committee this morning, the written decision letters prepared by the staff <coughs> and before the committee represent the intended content of the committee's decision in this matter, okay? All right, we have a properly stated motion that is legally satisfactory as well. Do we have a second? Not a second, but I, for consistency, recuse myself since I was not present at the meeting or there for the discussion. Thank you for making that clear. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. All right, motion been made and properly seconded. I'll note by the same pair of, uh, of people who made the motion and seconded it last time. All those in favor? Well, is there any discussion on the uh, motion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, motion passes. All right, thank you, sir. I'm very, very sorry to have to, Claire, but I, I think as an attorney, you appreciate that more than anybody. Okay, so we have a council representative here this morning, and, and by our rules, so we always try to give our busy public servants who are, who are paid so much money to be on the Metro Council uh, the opportunity to speak first. And so if you'd like to come on up, I appreciate it. if you'd introduce yourself, tell us what district you represent. We're very excited to have you here. And if you'll just press that little person button to turn on your mic and turn it red, you'll be live. Thank you so much, and thank you all for your service uh, to our communities and citizens. I am here to speak about um, Heritage Creek Phase 5 and 6, and also Thornton Grove Phase 4. Uh, the Heritage Creek Phase three, 5, 6, the applicant is uh, requesting a variance to the, the stormwater variance to the project that uh, I and the community believe would be a um, hard, would be a, I, I would say a hardship to the community. I know that they are, uh, the applicant is presenting a hardship uh, for um, how the impact of shortening the uh, crossing over the Little Creek in this development would mean that they would have to have less uh, units in the development, but that in doing that, it would also uh, cause a hardship for the community, the existing community next to this development, as well as downstream uh, from this development. And I don't really see a reason uh, to do that at the expense of, of the residents in the community. So I'm opposed to this variance request and ask that you uh, disapprove it based on that it does not, it is not a hardship uh, for the applicant to follow the guidelines and rules set forth by the stormwater policies, and it is a hardship for the surrounding community to offer the variance. On the second item, Thornton Grove Phase 4, uh, there's a request to uh, remove 0.75 acres of wetland and wetland buffer uh, from this de development. Again, uh, this particular area has had a lot of flooding uh, problems over the years. Most of this development is in a, a flood uh, way, I believe, and 
removing that wetland would exacerbate uh, the, the flooding and, and issues that we have. Not only that, it is also in an area that is uh, geographically and topographically the, the made where it needs, there's a lot of slopes, uh, there's a creek that runs through there, so we need this type of wetland and, and wetland buffer to protect uh, the, the existing homes as well as the homes that will be built in this area. By removing that, we would be um, compromising the integrity of the, the new homes that would be built there. So again, I would ask that um, the variance request in this in this regard be uh, be denied as well, based on uh, the the hardship that it would cause to the uh, existing communities as well as the new communities that will uh, come as a result of these developments. Thank you. Do you have Thank any you. questions? Does anybody have any questions for the council representative? Well, we really do appreciate you coming out and sharing your perspective with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right, now we get to the fun part. <laughs> we get to create more reasons to write minutes and decision letters, all right? Okay, so uh, our first case up this morning is case 2021-00012, Parks at Cane Ridge, phase one. So if, if those representatives are here, if you'd come on up to the uh, front table, um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to read a legal statement that lets you know your rights of appeal. Uh, we will uh, have the staff uh, summarize your case, uh, and then we'll open up to you for a 10-minute presentation. And after the 10 minutes, a fairly good hard stop on that, we'll open up for a public hearing. We'll, anyone who speaks for, speak against, will speak. We'll read emails, letters, whatever, whatever we need to do, hear from council representatives that may show up late. After that, we'll close the public hearing, and then we'll have a committee discussion. Okay, does that make sense? All right, and uh, Mr. Dale would like to make a comment. Uh, having been involved in this project extensively in the past, uh, I feel I should recuse myself from this. So Mr. Dale is officially recused, and we still have a quorum. All right, Mr. Bowman, if you'd like to read the opening legal statement, and if there are those in the audience that are gonna be participating later, this statement is also pertinent to you, by the way. So. Opening statement to the applicant. If you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Stormwater Management Committee, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiori with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of your committee's decision. You are advised to seek the independent advice of legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been satisfied. Okay. Uh, which staff person is going to be described? Okay, thank you, Mr. Mishu. So Mr. Mishu is going to describe the case as presented, the variance proposal. Thank you, Chairman. Steve Mishu, Metro Water Services. The first case is 2021-00012, the parks at Cane Ridge, Phase 1 at 5905 Cane Ridge Road. The parcel number is 182 -0 -0 -0 -0 -0 -0 the inspector is Sean Herman. This is Council District 31 being represented by Council Member John Rutherford. The applicant's request is a wetland removal and a wetland buffer removal. The appellant is Drapak Group 46 LLC being represented by Jake Vincent of Reagan Smith & Associates. Stormwater staff comments are as follows. The applicant worked with staff to develop a satisf satisfactory mitigation plan that includes a multi-year invasive control strategy Codes, no comment provided. Uh, planning, comments pending, final site plan review and approval. And Greenways has no comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mishu. So at this time, if uh, your main speaker would like to introduce the other guests, just let us a little bit, give us a little bit of information about their expertise so that if we want to ask them any questions, we'll know what they can share with us. And then you may proceed, and I'll start the clock when you finish introducing your guests. So my name's Max Cooks. I'm a principal at Draypack Capital Partners and I purchased the property and own it um, in 2015. Uh, on my right is Silas. Um, well, sorry, firstly, I'm not a technical expert, which is why I've got some local experts with me. Um, I've got Silas to my right from BDY. He's an environmental engineer and specialist in his field. And to his right is Jake from Reagan Smith. He is a civil engineer 
um, and an expert in his field. Both of them are local to Nashville and uh, have been working with me closely on this project for years. I'm sorry, did you say Jake from Reagan Smith? That's okay. right. Okay, I just had a flashback to Jake from State Farm there for a minute. So, <laughs> anyway, so, <that's, laughs> all right, you may proceed. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and sorry about my uh, accent. I'll uh, speak slowly. I might get a few more minutes if that's okay. It was, it was a commercial interruption, not an accent interruption. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, as I touched on, um, we uh, specialise in purchasing residential subdivisions. We operate out of 14 states and have a huge number of projects. Um, this particular project, uh, we have spent a lot of time working on the land because it's complicated. Um, as I said, we bought it in 2015 and we engaged a substantial team of local consultants. So we have an asset management and development team called St Burke. We have Reagan Smith, who I mentioned to my right, BDY Environmental, to my right as well, who's our environmental consultant. We have Mid-South Cultural Resources and consultants working on it. We have TRC Environmental, who's a cemetery consultant. Um, Beaver Engineering, a geotechnical consultant, and Rory Dale and his firm have been working on it. Um, the, the project has, <clears throat> when we first bought it, we worked with planning staff at Metro Nashville for the better part of 18 months. <clears throat> and their number one priority was connectivity, um, making sure all the roads connect. And we debated with them uh, for a significant amount of time over those 18 months to reduce the impact on the environmental uh, features on the site. Um, specifically, we negotiated out the connection of Legacy Drive. Legacy Drive uh, was a requirement to be connected to our main collector road. So we were able to convince uh, the staff and the Planning Commission to prevent that connection. Um, in addition to that, as I said, the number one priority was connectivity. We made the east-west connection road. That was critical in order to get site plan approval. In order to do that, we had to buy additional land and easements and right-of-ways and temporary construction easements, you name it, we had to do it. Um, in doing so, we, we also uh, negotiated with them to reduce the width of the road and the right-of-way um, because what they wanted, again, would have impacted the existing uh, environmental features. Then, in addition to working with them, we worked very closely with the neighbours. To the north, we have Cane Ridge Farms, over 600 houses that we worked with very closely, and the Cane Ridge Community Club. Their number one priority, being the Cane Ridge Community Club, was the on-site cemeteries. It was protecting, surveying, identifying, and ensuring there was reasonable buffers around them all, which, again, we did. We identified them all through various reports and um, staked them, identified them, protected them. Uh, <clears throat> we, so that, that limited, again, where this collector road could go because we had to stay outside of the cemeteries and the buffers that we put to them. Then in addition to that, there's significant topography on the land and a huge number of streams and other wetlands. So in designing the site, we, uh, we were quite hamstrung about how you actually design it to make it work without destroying and ploughing through the existing environmental features. The other thing the Cane Ridge Community Club was adamant about was putting some type of buffer around the project, which we did, um, and as well as not coming in and, quote, unquote, nuking the site, where we just destroy everything, um, which, again, we haven't. Um, so that, that's a little bit of history of how we got here. Um, so what we're seeking is the removal of two small, isolated, low resource, um, non-ponding wetlands. They are, one of them's 0.11 acres and the other one is 0.15 acres. Um, the, there is um, some chatter, but we don't have it confirmed, that these low-resource, isolated, small wetlands were actually man-made. 
and they were used to manufacture clay bricks historically. Now, we, that's some chatter that Silas can go into detail, but we don't have evidence that that's actually factual, but it just might help give an understanding of the um, fact that these um, wetlands are limited from an ecological function. They are limited from a habitat and wildlife perspective. Um, they have limited filtration. It's literally uh, at the maximum point, 10 foot of soil on top of clay. Um, but the, the wetlands are not recognised by the US Army Corps of Engineers. Um, neither wetland is recorded in Metro Nashville's wetland inventory. Um, both classified as low resource value wetlands under TRAMS ranking methodology. Uh, the project and proposed fill to these wetlands will not impact floodplain. It will not increase flood heights. It will not impact stormwater runoff or it will not impact the existing streams. Uh, next slide. Um, now, since we had our site plan approved unanimously by Planning Commission in 2018, we have gone into the weeds to really identify um, how this project can be laid. And what you can see is the before and after photos. And the reason uh, we wanted to show them is because it illustrates other additional items that have been taken into account. For example, you can see we have reduced the lot count um, down by 31 lots. We have, uh, we have reworked the road network to account for the large Briley Cemetery in the middle. We actually increased the buffer around it from 0.25 acres to, to 1.66 acres and made it a centre focal point of the community. Um, as I touched on, we've eliminated Legacy Drive, that connection, because that would have destroyed moderate wetland and larger wetlands. And, um, and most importantly, the design avoids all stream crossings on the, la on the land, but it also avoids uh, the eight large important wetlands that are on the property. And you can see on the right hand side that they are, they're substantial and we're um, trying to stay out of them. Um, we reduced the right of way. Um, on the collector road, down from 80 foot to 59 foot. Um, so that, that had a big impact on the disturbance of the land, but also safety, which I'll touch on in a minute. Um, and then lastly, uh, we increased from what was approved our open space by an additional six and a half acres to what, um, to what we had approved by Planning Commission. Um, so, if I jump to the next um, and the next page, the, I want to touch on some of the, qu the queries that were raised and just address them head on. So um, at last hearing, last hearing there was a uh, comment about the size of the cemetery and the number of cemeteries on site. Um, we provided a cemetery report and our archaeological report to the Cane Ridge Community Club. Um, we undertook a cemetery survey and archaeological survey in 2018, again in 2021, and again last week we had someone walk the field prior to following our neighbourhood community meeting, which we did for the, for the second time. Uh, the next query related to the site plan application not being submitted or approved for the project. Um, a final site plan application has been submitted to Metro plan Nashville Planning. Um, and the reviews in process. All the minor revisions that we made from the approved 2018 plan to the plan we've showed you has been communicated to planning staff along the way and acknowledged and approved as we have moved through this process. So it's extremely likely that they will support this administratively. Next slide, please. Um, there was a query that from the Mill Creek Watershed Association who we've been working closely with recently um, and their query was, has the Cane Ridge Community Club been engaged and addressed concerns? As I said, the answer is yes. We did a public presentation prior to COVID in Q4 2018. Um, we had their support. We went to Planning Commission, got approved. We did another community meeting last week, um, and that was 
a success, we believe. Uh, and then I've actually followed up with phone calls to both the Cane Ridge Community Club and to uh, Mill Creek within the last 48 hours. Um, there was a comment um, that has the site been evaluated for the presence of state and federally protected endangered species, specifically streams, streamside salamanders and national crayfish? The answer is yes. The site was surveyed in 2018. It was again surveyed in 2021 by BDY and Silas can address technical questions. Um, it was during the TWRA approved window both streamside salamanders and crayfish were not identified. There was no evidence of the species or anything like that on site. Uh, in addition, uh, we've avoided all the jurisdictional streams where there could potentially be habitats. Excuse me, uh, we're out of time. So uh, does anybody have any objections to us giving them two more minutes? Okay. okay. I'm, right, please, I'm please close, proceed. I promise. All right, thank we're you. We're going to get to the fun stuff, the mitigation. So just bear with me. Uh, the last comment was um, a question about the size and description of the two wetlands that are in question um, that are defined by the wetland assessment completed by BDY. The wetland delineations were conducted during the 90-day normal precipitation conditions in January 2021 prior to spring conditions when streams and wetlands often dry up. The map of the existing conditions in the report have been verified by both TDEC and USACE during agency field visits. Mitigation. We have uh, worked with Metro Water Services staff on a mitigation strategy that is a three-year monitoring process to remove the invasive species. Uh, we're going to try and remove 100% of them, um, but the goal is um, that less than 5% survive. Uh, it's on 1.47 acres uh, of the treated area. We're going to be planting barefoot, bare root trees and native herbaceous seed mix. Um, and it's an additional 1.35 acres of planting in six mitigation areas. Um, we are going to hopefully all the trees survive um, and that's part of the monitoring and ongoing maintenance that we will be undertaking of those areas. Um, and we are also going to be purchasing 0.74 in-system wetland mitigation credits at a two to one ratio. I'm afraid we're gonna have to stop there. And so if, if you don't mind, um, I think you just made one of the most important points that we need to know, the most rele relevant points to our deliberation. So uh, so if you, if, if Rebecca, if you'll leave these slides kind of where they are, we can come back to them maybe in the question and answer session. Maybe you can scroll through them for us so we can see if there's anything else relevant there. So at this time, uh, I want to open up the public hearing for anyone who might speak in favor of the current variance proposal. Anyone here speak in favor? All right, seeing none. Anyone here speak in pose to the current proposal? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I just want to remind the staff that uh, the gentleman mentioned that there were some letters in opposition that came through okay. at the last meeting. And okay. I, I think he was trying to address some of them, and then the rest of them is in the, the tablets for you. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So we have anyone here physically who wants to speak in opposition? All right. Seeing none. Uh, so, Mr. Mish, you just noted we have some letters in the file if you want to refer to your electronic pad. Try not to refer to that the wrong company. And uh, the uh, um, do we have any emails or, or any kind of other representation, written representation that needs to be brought out? There was an updated letter from the Mill Creek Watershed Association, which is a paper copy that you have. Okay. Um, they had written one last time as well. Okay. So if you want to read through that. I want to encourage everyone to look through that. That's the only updated letter I got. So the, the rest of the letters that are in here on the tablet is, is what we had before for the last meeting. Okay. All right. So uh, am, am I remembering correctly we granted a preliminary approval for this at a previous meeting? Okay. So they uh, just to kind of um, help everyone listening know why we do that. We, we want to try to give... Uh, 
some direction to folks who are spending a lot of money, investing a lot of time to make sure that at least they're on the right path, the preliminary approval is not a guaranteed approval of the final variance, but it, it, it is an, an early discussion to make sure that resources are being avoided and mitigated as, as reasonable and uh, assuming that uh, we can approve that as presented. So, all right, so uh, now that we have uh, exhausted all of our public input uh, opportunities, we're gonna close the public hearing and open it up for the committee to deliberate. And so Rebecca is dutifully scrolling through the, the screens that were provided. And um, uh, can you go, uh, where, where was, I think there were about four more left in their presentation. Okay, all right, yeah, that just gives us a zoomed in view of the two well insights. And that's it, right? Okay, this is a mitigation site. All right, all right. Any members of the committee have any questions for the uh, applicant? I do have one question, Mr. Chair. In the packet, there were various additions of the site plan listed as alternates. What we are discussing and what you've presented on today is which alternate, and is that, I'm assuming that is obviously the preferred plan, right? <clears throat> yeah, so frankly, we've had about a thousand iterations of this plan because it's challenging land. Um, and to appease everybody from staff to community to obviously the environmental features is a challenge and it's a bit of an art, not a uh, science. And this one that we've come up with that is change, as I mentioned, from the 2018 approved plan is the site, is the site plan we're going with, which is the lower density, it's more open space and less impacting on everything. And this is the plan that's been uh, presented to the community and it's been it, uh, the, all, the, you've been working with this plan for some period of time now to where the community has Correct. a thorough understanding of, of what is now presented. Yeah, okay. so it was presented in 2018 and approved by the community and by the Planning Commission, and then it evolved and reduced in lot size. The road network relatively stayed the same, but we avoided more streams, more crossings, more connections to prevent um, the impacts of the land. We increased sizes of the cemetery, things like that. Communication with planning staff was done the entire way at Metro Nashville, but then the community was brought in to see uh, the plan as well. Um, so nothing has changed from that perspective. And that's the two lined up next to each other, the image you just had. Um, so you, if you go back one... <clears throat> yeah, so that's literally what we presented originally and then where we're at today. And the, it, the road network looks the same, but there's little details you'll notice where cul-de-sacs have been pulled back to prevent streams. Crossings to the north have been removed because there were streams and wetlands. As I touched on, Legacy Drive has um, was stopped. Um, so just things of that nature. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Mishu. Uh Just for clarification, uh, I think the one that they're seeking for approval is the one on the right that has the two wetland buffer removals. Yes. Um, yeah. And I think the question of alternative plan, um, the applicant did provide alternative plans per our checklist. Uh, we usually don't get that, so we appreciate him providing that. Um, but I just want to be clear that we're not voting on an alternative plan that we have in our submittal, but we are voting on the plan that's in front of you will say in his presentation to the right. On the right panel of slide six. So if when someone wanted to make a motion at some point, either for or against, this this would probably be a good thing to refer to in the motion. Within your tablet or your electronic device, I believe it's page 41 of 85 in the parts at Cane Ridge, phase one. Okay. So um, as, we, as we have all experienced, extra detail is not undesired in a motion. <laughs> I appreciate the clarification, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We don't penalize anyone for falling into that trap. But <laughs> So uh, 
uh, you always have a chance for quick redemption here. So, so the um, I, I guess I've just got one general question. You know, um, I, you know, this is not relevant to the regulatory decision that we're here to make, but it is relevant to the concerns of the community. How, how many trees do you plan to remove? I, I, I mean, do you plan to clear cut the site and only leave the regulatory buffer outline of trees left? Or do you only plan to clear the footprints of the lots and the roads? Or do you plan to do maybe some selective tree removal on some of the lots um, and, and leave as much forested landscape as you can? So that question was actually um, a one of the priorities from the Cambridge Community Club originally. Please do not quote unquote nuke the site. Yeah. And that's not what we do okay. on any of our projects. Okay. Um, this site in particular has substantial topography. Um, so nuking the site's actually a real challenge, not saying that we would do it. Um, we are only the, we are only disturbing um, uh, about 60% of this land. Um, we have no intention of going into the wetlands, into the buffer streams, um, or into any of the natural features because we can't obviously put lots on. We don't want to touch the cemeteries. It, even though the Cambridge Community Club don't want us to, we don't want to. It creates a lot more work. It's very challenging. It's a lot, a lot of property value too for people who want to own trees, lots with trees around them, right? Exactly right. There's a there's a intrinsic value that relates to dollars and cents. Um, so for us, the answer is yes. We're going to be conscientious about how this is developed from a tree removal perspective. And, and just to be aware, we also own additional land um, that we've deemed undevelopable in sections that are contiguous to this tract. So this is 100 acres, but we actually have land to the north and we have a high tension power line running through it. We have other things going on that at this stage is just sitting there, um, which is not disturbed. But we're only focused today on this 100 acres. Okay, excellent. Okay, so... Um, I had a, yes. oh, sorry. Yes, sorry. I had a quick question. So yes, part of the mitigation plan includes purchase of off-site credits. Those aren't easy to come by these days. Have you already inquired about availability? Yes, uh, we have a reservation from the Tennessee Mitigation Fund. Uh, it's an in lieu fee program and they have thin system credits available when, when we reserved them, so. Thank you. Okay. Any, uh, Ms. Ronette Adams Taylor? I just mentioned, you mentioned that on, you had a meeting with the community on the 28th of sept last month. Um, so the plan that we are voting on now, that's exactly what was related to the show to them and their understanding from the, there was clear understanding of how the process would be, what wetlands you're asking for, and the type of uh, mitigation plan that you're going to be providing. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So every plan that has been submitted um, to, to you folks and to the community and to everybody else hasn't changed um, in the last, call it, six months. Um, that's what we're, that's the final plan. Okay. Do we have enough information for a motion? Mr. Chairman, one more please if I may. Yes, always love to hear from staff. There, there was a mention of a preliminary variance and I'm not 100% sure this is a preliminary, and I'd like to maybe get clarification from the applicant what they were seeking. Um, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure. I'm we're, we're seeking the variance. It's, it's, I, uh, maybe we don't often ask applicant to clarify our regulations for us, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it's preliminary or final. But so, so I don't want to come back if that's what you're asking. <laughs> yeah, that's, with, that's with a, all that's due respect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to give you for that. I'm giving seconds. you a harder time than I should. So. Sure. Uh, so on preliminary cases that go through planning that have wetland removals or stream disturbances. We asked the applicant to come and get a feel good idea of what the committee thinks of their proposal. So stormwater staff, we withhold approval until you go to the committee um, and we get a good idea if the committee members appear to be satisfied. Uh, a final submittal is 
when you have more detailed construction drawings and the plan you present to the committee <coughs> is pretty much the final construction drawings that you're going to move forward with. So if this is a plan that you don't feel that's going to have changes and this is your final application, then it should be heard as a final. Yes. Uh, if you think this is a preliminary that could change because of planning comments or public works or other metro agencies, then, then we steer you towards a preliminary plan. So that way, if they do approve it and you have a plan or record that's approved, that we don't do our construction drawing review and other agencies and then find out, <coughs> sorry, my apologies, that there's a disc discrepancy between the plan and record the committee approved and the plan of record for the construction drawings that planning and stormwater is going to approve. Understood. So this is a final. Um, we are very, very, very far through the construction drawings component with Metro Nashville, with the different departments. Um, final comments. Um, it's not changing. Okay. And, and the reason I brought that up is because I do see the final application. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I should have had coffee before I got here. So, <laughs> Uh, I, did, I did see a final site plan being submitted through planning, and that's why I was asking for the clarification. Okay. So I, I guess I'm, I'm inclined to ask Ms. Costonis, uh, if, we, if we make a precise motion that this variance decision is based upon, is contingent upon this plan not changing, is that sufficient? Y yes, I think so. Okay. All right. We really do prefer that you come with more detailed construction plans, uh, but... Uh, <clears throat> just cuts down on miscommunication. So, all right. What's the committee's uh, feeling at this point? I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve the variance request based on this being the final plan, uh, based on what the applicant has submitted before us today and reviewed with the community. All right, we have a second? A second. All right, we have a motion to second. Is there any discussion, clarification, further amendments on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, motion passes. Thanks we for We appreciate all the hard you work. taking the effort to be conscious of the surrounding environment. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank Jake, I apologize, you're probably going to have a red shirt and a pair of khaki <laughs> pants in your chair when you get back to work. So for months on end, sorry, pal. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see, we'll see y'all. Right. Okay, so let's have our next applicant come up. Let me uh, swipe the screen here, and it looks like it is case 2021-00014 Thornton Grove Phase 4, 3500 Brick Church Pike. See Heritage Creek. Can we go ahead and do them now that I asked them to come up? Okay. So we have an electronic malfunction, so it's reversed the order of the uh, agenda. So we're going to go ahead and let you go since you're up here. So um, uh, we're going to go through the same routine. Yep. Did, were you here to hear the opening legal statement concerning your rights of appeal earlier? Got it. Okay. Yeah. All I'll right. So, myself on this one too. All right. So uh, Mr. Dale's going to recuse himself. All right. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we've myself. jumped down one because there's a, well, at least on my screen, the next case was missing. So, okay, so uh, uh, we're going to have uh, a representative Metro staff introduce himself and uh, summarize the case. Good morning, uh, Gabriel Moore with Metro Water, and uh, here to present uh, Thornton Grove case number twenty twenty one zero 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 one four. That's Thornton Grove phase four. It is at 3500 Brick Church Pike. Uh, parcel number is 050-000-129-00. Uh, the inspector is Catherine O'Hara. Council district is three. Uh, council member is Jennifer Gamble. The uh, request is to remove 0 0.075 total acres of wetland and wetland buffer. The appellant is Thornton Grove Green LLC and the representative is Hunter Dale with Dale and Associates. Comments, uh, stormwater staff comments request that if mitigation is approved, the applicant vary the tree species so that no more than one species comprises more than 20% of the total. 
There are no comments provided from codes. Uh, planning the final site plan application 2006 P 013007 has not been approved and the plans are subject to change through review process, but the stormwater management committee plans under consideration are currently consistent with the final site plans under review. And there are no comments provided by Greenways. Thanks, sir. All right, so at this time, uh, we're gonna give you 10 minutes okay. uh, to uh, make uh, your proposal, and then we'll open up the public hearing for yeah. those for and against and Fantastic. you solve the routine. Um, Rebecca, could you, could you pull up the overall PUD just to kind of get a feel for what we're doing here? Let's do the overall if we can. There we go. Um, so Thornton Grove is a final PUD. Um, we're in the last phase of development. This is phase four. You know, earlier, I guess two years ago, we had some wetland mitigation up at the, on this plan, top right. So it's southeast. And so that's actually Ewing Creek and where a lot of the, the main wetland areas are on this property. And so what we're actually, we're now at the um, northwest, so the bottom left of the plan. And this feature was an old farm pond for that farmhouse. Um, it's about half an acre pond. Um, and it, so originally when the preliminary PUD was going through, this was always proposed to have been removed. Um, but I guess over the years, it just hasn't been maintained. Um, and so it's, it's got some herbaceous cover along the buffer areas and it overflows into that stream. Um, so TDEC is considered it jurisdictional. Um, it captures about eight acres of, of runoff, um, depending on how you view that hillside. So it's actually not really detaining much, and it's it's constantly wet. Um, Rebecca, can you pull up the pictures, please? And so that's what it looks like today. Um, it's not really, I mean, I don't even think this was done. Every time I've seen it, it looks about like this. So it's not really capturing any water. Um, it's just a pond that hasn't been maintained. So our proposal, if you can pull up the design plans, please, is to remove the pond. And we're actually gonna send all the runoff from the hillside to a bioretention area and then into a dry pond um, to detain all that and treat it. And then it's actually, there's an overflow in the outlet structure. There's some other wetlands in that stream buffer that we're d discharging into. So from a detention standpoint, you know, we're treating pre-post, we're treating water quality. Um, so from a hydraulic standpoint, it should function probably better uh, because that pond I don't think is really providing any hydraulic detention right now. Um, and for mitigation, what we decided to do was, since it's not really vegetated right now, it's mostly pond, we kind of went above and beyond and decided we would expand the existing stream buffers and plant like a, I think what we propose now would be the, it would be more of a stream buffer mitigation as far as the quantity of trees and things like that, but basically expand that. So you're providing some vegetative cover. Um, and then through the, the ARAP process, the developer is gonna be purchasing the wetland credits. Um, the public comment phase ended yesterday. So I think they're going through the application process of signing the letters and things like that, but they've approved from a technical standpoint the proposal to um, purchase the wetland credits. And so, you know, the alternative plan would have been to remove those lots and reroute the road. I think, you know, personally, my concern was just the hazard of it uh, next to a subdivision. You know, that thing is pretty gnarly. Um, like I've got a two-year-old and I can just see him in two years trying to run play in that thing. And that's where, from a civil standpoint, that would have been my major concern um, is having a feature like that in an area where there were homes. Um, but I do think uh, council person's concern about um, detention. I think, you know, when we sent these public notices out, there wasn't a really good description of where it was. So a lot of people had reached out to our office and I had, you know, sent them some information. I think they were thinking it was closer to the Ewing Creek area. Um, and this is more isolated away from that. So I think from a detention standpoint, we're, we're treating that um, sufficiently. And I think it's actually gonna help this area. And so this stream goes under the interstate. Um, there's a culvert under the interstate that will probably probably have inlet control there, I would imagine. Um, but ultimately the pre-post that we've modeled is, is less than existing. I think that's it. That's what I got. Okay. <clears throat> and um, 
So at this time, I'll open the public hearing for anyone who might want to speak in favor of the current variance proposal. Anyone here physically? All right, seeing none. Anyone here who would like to speak in opposition? All right, seeing none. Do we have any uh, emails, letters, council representatives, uh, comments? None that I'm aware of, sir. Yeah, no, no emails, comments. Okay. Please. All right. So at this time, we'll close the public hearing and open it up for a committee discussion. And I'll I'll start with one question: sure. Are you amenable to the staff's uh, proposal uh, concerning the tree yeah, of the tree density or the tree variety? Yeah. Okay. Is Sorry. is that in your current proposal, or is that something we need to include in the motion? Um, it's not in our current proposal. I don't okay. think we were just the proposal was just to remove the wetlands, but we can adjust the landscape plan so, as needed. So if 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 we do lean towards. Uh, Approval yeah. it might be a good idea to include that exact yeah, include language, the language in the on there. That'd be helpful for us, probably. So, if you have any details down there, uh, as the staff expert, that you want to make sure we cover in that motion, if you want to jot them down, that helps. Okay. I, I um, think that what's been already uh, in staff comments is is what we're looking for, sir. Okay. All right. Nothing additional. All right. So we can refer to those staff comments in the in the uh, staff review section of the variance proposal all right any comments or questions just a clarification so it is a jurisdictional feature yes but it is confirmed a man-made feature yeah so uh <laughs> you know what I'm saying. yeah the the um <laughs> the wetland mapper had it consist uh listed as a man-made wetland it was or it actually has it as a farm pond um on their inventory map so okay So we review these case by case. Uh, typically, we're a little more flexible with human-made features, man-made features, woman-made features. <laughs> What's the will of the committee? I think we make a motion. If ready. Right. I think. My motion would be that we approve applicants' requests with the caveat that they include the um, um, stormwater staff recommendations that the mitigation, if it's approved, that the, there's various tree species so that no more than one species compromises more than 20% of the total. So if the applicant is in agreement of that, that would be my motion. All right. That's our motion. Second the motion. All right. We have a motion to second. I don't think I've ever seen Miss Costona so happy. So, <laughs> and uh, is there any further discussion, amendments, or comments on the motion? All right. Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed. All right. Motion carries. Thank you. Guys. Thanks for the hard work. And we we did that in seven minutes from beginning to end. Pretty amazing. Okay, so we're ready for the next case, um, and that looks like that would be Cane Ridge, right? Cane Ridge Phase 1, am I correct? It's Heritage Creek. My, mine is all messed up. Okay, so show, show me the one that works. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, okay. So, so let's take let's take um, five minutes plus for bathroom break, and then we'll reconvene. Are you on the agenda? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we did. I have. I just need all kind of help today. Okay, Heritage Creek Phase Five and Six, one twelve sixty nine Hunters Lane. All right. Evidently, I'm just beyond help. So, okay. So, uh, were you all here to hear the opening legal statement regarding appeal? Okay, you understand your rights. Okay, so we're going to have staff introduce your case. If you'll introduce yourself. And then we'll proceed with your 10 minute uh, project overview. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Caitlin DeWald. I am representing Metro Water Development Services. 
case we are reading is uh, case number 2021-00013, Heritage Creek, phase five and six, addresses 1269 Hunters Lane, APN 03200006500, inspector is Catherine O'Hara, CD03, Jennifer Gamble. The applicant's request, uh, perpendicular stream crossing outside allowable limits and buffer disturbance. The appellant, West Burns, Goodall Homes, representatives, uh, representative Sam Christman from Reagan Smith and Associates, uh, comments, stormwater staff, staff, rec staff requests that if mitigation is approved, the applicant vary the tree species so that no more than one species comprises more than 20% of the total. Codes, no comment provided. Planning, approved consistent with final site plan application number 2019S 068002 and Greenway's no comment provided. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I'm gonna start the clock after you introduce your guests and, uh, uh, and then we will give you 10 minutes and then we'll open up the public hearing and then we'll close it and then we'll have a discussion. Okay, I don't think 10 minutes will, uh, I'll use that. But uh, I'm George Welch uh, with Reagan Smith, principal at Reagan Smith, got Jason Kilgore, we're both civil engineers. Um, Sam Christman could not be here and uh, we are representing Goodall Homes for, for this project. We'll just um, just make a few, a few points and then we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, this is a cluster lot option development. This is a, a this next phase of an ongoing project. Uh, so there, there is a, the roadway extension into this section is already uh, built to a certain, so we're extending an existing road. Um, the, there's a TVA easement. There's, there's quite a few things going on that, that, that kind of ca um, caused this less than uh, 90 degree crossing. Um, so we're trying to, um, uh, Across the TVA line and the stream at, at a minimum uh, impact. The request is uh, the, the crossing is less than 10 degrees off of the the, the minimum. We're at about 65 degree crossing, which is uh, again less than than ideal. But uh, I believe, you know, historically uh, it's not ideal. But I think that's not uncommon to see uh, crossings at at this angle. There. It will not be, in our opinion, an adverse effect on the stream anymore than if, if it was 10 more degrees, other than this probably maybe five feet longer this culvert would be in, than if we were able to, to meet, the, uh, meet the requirement. Um, it is a three-sided culvert, so we're spanning the, spanning the stream, so no, not impacting the, uh, trying to minimize those impacts. There is landscape mitigation that we are proposing. Um, in our opinion, if to, to make this compliant, uh, it would require adjusting the roadway, putting a, probably a reverse curve in there to, to, so that we could get the crossing at the that angle that would be compliant. But in our opinion, that would create more disturbance uh, probably to the stream buffer than this is. So uh, that, that would be one point we would make. Um, and I believe that's, uh, that's kind of the points that I'd like to make again. We, we're, happy to, to answer any, any questions you may have or, or further clarify anything. But we, this is a, we are requesting a, a final uh, approval for okay. this, not a preliminary. Because plans are going through and uh, we've been through several, uh, already had some stormwater comments and we're addressing, so full, full blown construction plans have been prepared. Great. Great. And you're going to protect Jake for us too after you gave him <laughs> such a hard time? Yeah. <laughs> I noted you were the principal, so I assumed yes. you could do that. So, <laughs> All right, so do we have anybody who'd speak here in favor of the current variance proposal? Anybody who'd like to come up and speak? All right, do we have any, anyone who'd like to speak in opposition of the current proposal? Okay. All right, what we'd like to ask you to do is come up to the mic uh, at the podium, and we'll ask you to state your name, uh, your address, just like you see people do on TV with Metro Council, and we're going to give you about two minutes uh, because since we have several people to speak, so and I'll start the clock after you introduce your name and your address. I'm Dr. Carolyn Baldwin Tucker, 1521 Naples Avenue. Do I start now? Okay. 
The variance request by Goodall Homes for Heritage Creek should be disapproved. Rationale presented by the Goodall Homes in the explanation of a hardship does not meet the standard for granting a variance. If variances are granted solely because the developer will lose profit if held to the minimum standard, there would be no need for standards regarding the mitigation efforts proposed. A mere reduction of the number of lots would be the best mitigation effort for decreasing the impact of a negativity upon Little Creek and homes downstream. As evidenced in Goodall's hardship statement, and I quote, redesign of the road location and orientation would require elimination of several lots in the development, end quote. From that statement, it is clear that the essence of the hardship lies in the desire to, of the developers to maintain the level of profit, even if it causes flooding problems with the Little Creek. And the explanation of affordable housing is implied and as a reason for uh, requesting this variance. Tying that variance request to the need for affordable housing, housing is a far stretch. And in that affordable housing generally uses a basis of 80% of the HUD area median income of households in a particular area, area. And the initial proposal for the development did not include such as HUD homes, as was stated. Further, the variance would be uh, an adverse disturbance to the buffer, which would allow lots to be built in areas uh, that borderline the repairison zone of Little Creek and are not conducive for construction, disturbing the buffer in the repairing zone and then planting supplemental seeds to mitigate the disturbance flies in the face of conservation efforts and preservation of natural habitats. Therefore, based on the fact that the hardship request does not meet the standard for granting a variance, I ask that you disapprove the variance request and there has been no meeting with regard to this particular aspect of Heritage Creek. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that. I gave you a few more seconds there. All right, next person would like to come up. Please uh, give us your name, your address, and we'll ask you to keep your remarks to two minutes, please. Do I press this button? You're good to go. I'm good. Hi, I'm Elaine McReynolds. I'm pleased to be here. I'm at, I live at 1517 Naples Avenue in uh, Grand Villa Estates, which is adjacent to this development. All right. This is, I may not be oriented correctly. This is little, this is the Little Creek and a tributary. So we're, we're, we're talking about, um, we're talking about a development that has a lot of fragile floodplain flood area in it. So the, many of the people that are here, we're here because for over 40 years, we've suffered flooding because of this with all the plantings that were there. It's been cleared now. You've got records, I hope, uh, within your file. Uh, if not, I've bound uh, the letters for you that the, some of the citizens have, have uh, sent via email. I did that because some of them bounced back or were blocked, and I wanted to make sure these are in the public record. So I appreciate being able to send that. Um, yeah, I'm through with that. Thank you. So you can see this is very fragile land, and we are very much concerned about this development and any uh, variance request. Um, the, on this chart, though, I neglected to say, there are two crossings of the Little Creek. You've only got one proposal before you right now. And so we're very much concerned about that as well. I know from experience, I was the um, federal administrator for the National Flood Insurance Program in FEMA. And I'm very much concerned about how governments mitigate flooding on the front end and the back end. Because trust me, I've been in those situations where you see what happens to families and communities um, after there's a flood. So I'm very sensitive sensitized to that. I implore you to deny this, this request for variance. There has been no meetings with the public uh, other than some one or two of our people getting a letter of variance. That's, that's it. So 
I also, in, in my uh, response to you, have responded to Metro's request for mitigation grants because downstream, and we live downstream, um, downstream, the Metro is buying houses using mitigation grants for hundreds of thousands of dollars, spending that when you have this opportunity on the front end to make sure that you don't exacerbate the, the flooding. Thank you very much. I Thank appreciate you, ma that. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that. Someone else like to come up? If you could repeat the same process. Mr. Miss, you'd be glad to help you with any extracurricular activities you need. <laughs> Hi, my name is Elaine Lovett. I live at 4209 Granville Boulevard. I live downstream from all of this. I disapprove of the variance because I've been there since 1978 and I've had to at one point come home and find my um, bedroom, my den and my bathroom downstairs flooded. So that's what's happening now. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen if you approve this. Uh, I had to end up getting a sump pump in order to pump water out so that, because my downstairs is a lower level, so it will get the water first. So I'm a senior citizen. I don't want to have to move somewhere else. I'm asking you to consider us, this community, be prayerful in your decision, because we have been living there for so such a long time, and we've all, we've all the ones that live downstream, because I'm the third house, uh, at the beginning of the subdivision. So naturally, that's where the water, it runs downhill. So you look at the water coming, you go, okay, what's going to happen? So I'm asking you to consider all of that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Gwendolyn Harris, and I live at 1386 Bella Vista Boulevard. I have resided at this residence for 42 years. Prior to recent years, I have not experienced any flooding. Here lately, when it rains, we have to, we're experiencing water running into our garage. This morning, if I get off the patio and I step into my uh, actual yard, my feet are wet because the water is still standing there. The concerns that I've heard this morning regarding Goodall addresses TVA and Goodall, but I haven't heard anything that says anything about those of us that live within the thousand foot from the project or from the request. And I am one of those persons. I am four of those persons. And my concern is why is it now necessary to have this reduction. Why was this not presented early on when they presented their plans to the Planning Commission? And if I'm not mistaken and I'm reading the plans correctly, there's been a significant difference in what they're asking now than what they presented at the Planning Commission. And I want to know why. And if it impacts us, why were we not told how it's going to impact us? The request, if granted, will definitely create a hardship. We're already experiencing hardship. Forty-two years ago, the person in front of me could not sell the house before they made improvements because their house flooded so bad. The improvements were made, and he was allowed to sell that house. But you've heard this morning, other persons on that side of the street are experiencing flooding, and they have sunk pumps. I implore you, please think about those of us who've been there 42 plus years, taxpayers like you, and I asked you to disapprove this plan. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate that. Thanks for being here. Yes, sir. Come on up. You don't, you don't mind if I. Oh, uh, yes, you can take it off. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Ooh. To speak. <laughs> uh, I passed a church as well, and I'm uh, trying to do anything with these. Uh, uh, my name is Morris Tipton. I live at 1382 Bella Vista Boulevard, uh, right next door to the young lady that just uh, was on the microphone. I echo the sentiments and statements that, that my neighbors have made. Uh, my family moved into the neighborhood when I was in the I think the seventh grade, I'm 57 years old now. 
I remember when just because of water runoff and flooding, when my parents had to build a retaining wall in our backyard uh, to keep land from washing it to our driveway. Uh, just over time, uh, with deterioration, about six years ago, I had to replace that entire wall and have it repaired at a substantial cost. Uh, I understand that, I know where I live, um, but as we look at new development all over the city of Nashville, but in particular to our community, I think we have to always be mindful uh, for those persons that have been longtime residents in those communities. Um, we can't stop progress, but we can make sure that progress doesn't adversely impact and affect those persons that have made long, lifelong commitments to the community and to the city of Nashville. For those reasons and many more that may even be stated after me, I ask that you give strong consideration uh, to rejecting this application for, for this variance. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. My name is Jesse Tucker. I live at 1521 Naples Avenue. And uh, before I read my statement, I'd like to make a couple of statements. Uh, about two years ago, we were here before the Planning Commission. And in our neighborhood, the water was so bad that it washed out the support around the drainage. And I think, I'm sure most of you know what a what I mean, the drainage, all of the support, the dirt, the ground around the drainage was washed away. So it took a while for Metro to get out there and fix it. And of course, whenever Metro has to come out to repair something, that's cost. That's cost to the city. That's expensive. And that was before as the fire we had to buffer. So just think of what it's going to be like once the buffer is, is disturbed or removed. We'll have a real problem out there. And that will be, and, and it's going to cost the city because the city has to be the one to fix it. And it's going to cost the taxpayer because it's going to be our money that they're spending. So, uh, so that we won't have to continue to do that, uh, so Metro won't have to continue to do that, we'd like to see uh, this this uh, uh, variance request uh, disapproved uh, because there, are, there, are, uh, there is no harsh, no hardship uh, stated in the variance request. Decreasing the number of houses does not meet the standard for variance due to a hardship. It's not a hardship for good old homes, uh, and it should not be allowed to disturb the buffer zone because this will cause flooding in other areas such as Grand Villa Estate and the homes downstream uh, of Little Creek. There is major flooding in the area after heavy rains. Homes in Grand Villa that back up to the creek already have used, already have to use sump pump to get water out of their basement, as the lady ahead of me has already stated. I ask that you disapprove the variance request because there is no justification for any hardship. Thank you, appreciate your time, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Thanks, sir, appreciate that. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to share your perspective. All right, do we have anyone else? You know the routine. My name is Michael Martin. My family lives at 1528 Hunters Lane. We are the property that goes to the north side of the development. And I'm just speaking to the amount of water flow that I have seen in the area over the years. We do have, there's a notable amount of water flow in the area that I could definitely see negatively impacting downstream from where we are. 
doesn't really affect us up. We're pretty high up, but at the same time, through the wetlands and the tributary that leads into Little Creek from the north side, it often overflows its banks and even flows into the pastures in that area. There's a significant amount of water flow in that area. And for that, I can understand people's concerns about safety issues of water flow and whether the systems can actually maintain and handle that amount of water flow. And that's all I have to say. Thank y'all. Thanks, sir. Appreciate your time. Anyone else here to speak in opposition? Okay, so I, th I think our committee rules allow you some rebuttal time. And um, I know there were two questions that came up, the question of uh, were there public meetings and were there any differences made in the plan? And of course, flooding was, a, as you heard, sure. was a recurrent theme. So if you want to address at least sure. those three topics, uh, Thank you. we'll give you yeah, time and, to do and that. First off, I appreciate and respect the, uh, each of these folks' concerns and, and their opinion on things. Uh, however, I respectfully disagree on some of the things. Uh, the variance requests that we're making really has no flood implications. I mean, this is a, a box culvert, whether it's 10 degrees more one way or the other, the box culvert is going across the creek and it's not gonna really change the flow characteristics of the stream. Um, the, the plan that we are asking for, and this is not a, a, this, a referendum on, the, on the, uh, the development itself. I mean, the development is ongoing. Um, it is a, a, an approved concept plan that we're developing under. Uh, this and, and there's been no change to this plan, uh, significant change that, that was approved at the Planning Commission. There were public hearings and public meetings at that time. That has been a couple of years ago. Uh, there was no public hearing for this variance request. We, we followed the rules and, and state put the signs out and, and sent the letters out. But no, no I will, there was not a public uh, meeting for this. Um, as I mentioned before, the, uh, uh, this plan would, the, the variance would probably increase the length of the culvert by maybe, maybe five feet from what, if it was fully compliant. So that, that is not a significant increase. Um, we are meeting all the stormwater regulations for detention and, and stormwater runoff, so we're not, we will not be increasing the flood downstream. Uh, one of the gentlemen mentioned that you know, two years ago about the flooding. This has not been under construction for two years, so obviously that's that's not anything that was caused by this development. Uh, and again, to reiterate, to, to make it compliant, we are extending an, an existing road, so adding a reverse curve. It is a subdivision, so I'm not, it's not high speed, but a reverse curve, the safety, uh, you know, outweighs the additional five feet of culvert, in my opinion, that, that we're requesting, so. I don't know if I answered the three. Uh, did that address the three? It's, it's just your there? opportunity to okay. respond. Yeah. So, um, so, and I, I got a little bit ahead of myself. Does is, do we have any other public input um, letters, emails? I know there was a packet of letters that was passed around. Yeah, I think uh, the the neighboring uh, properties all emailed the committee members directly, but also included them on your tablet as well. So all the letters. Seem to be in opposition. Okay, and I, I did. I did review my emails that I received. So, okay. So, not seeing any other public input, uh, we're going to close the public hearing and sort of a response time and open it up for the committee discussion. I, I will say, um, uh, I take it upon myself to try to add a little clarity for our committee discussion. We're here to address a culvert crossing that is facilitating flow uh, in the direction that it's flowing. It, it does constrict flow. Um, it, it, there appears to be, most of the focus appears to be on the development. Uh, uh, and frankly, any hardening of the earth's surface is gonna increase flooding. Unfortunately, that's not really what we get to decide here. We, we're not the body that gets to decide whether or not the development should go in. We're the body that decides whether or not the interruption to the stream and the buffer should go in. So um, just add, just want to make that point. Uh, but I do want to acknowledge that your comments and your concerns as, a, as a members of the public are accurate. Uh, flooding does typically get worse with hardening the earth with development, so. 
Okay. So with that, um, does any anybody want to comment, ask questions, the applicant? No. <clears throat> we'll have a comment. Um, <clears throat> you know, as engineers, I think that we've failed the public. I really believe that. Uh, over time, uh, we've seen this in this committee. Uh, when I first started this, we were sitting in a small room. There was never any public involved at all. Um, as Nashville has grown, and I go to a lot of community meetings, traffic and stormwater are the things I hear the most. Absolutely hear the most. Uh, at, at the Planning Commission, when we go for the Planning Commission, we're not required to have public hearings, but you better have one. And my opinion on this one is that I feel like you need to meet with this community. We can sit here and we can talk about um, how Im little impact this has, and as engineers, I think we understand that. But although this council district is very articulate, and I heard some really impressive things said to this committee, especially by Ms. Tucker, um, I think you need to meet with them. I don't know if we have the ability to defer this. I would like to defer this. I think that you should meet with this community because a lot of the questions that they answer, that they, that they have, I think you can easily answer, and they may not have much to do with this variance request at all, but I think the public deserves that, and I think that, that that's something they should do, and um, I would hope that you might defer this on your own and, and meet with this group of individuals because I think they deserve it, and uh, that's what I have to say. Okay. Any other committee responses? I, I, I'm going to have to uh, agree with my colleague here that um, if it came to a vote now that I would have to deny, and it's simple on the fact that the committee and the amount of emails that we received from the community um, weighs heavily on the fact that of uh, that there has not been an in-depth conversation with them and input with them, uh, to them on how it affects their community and we have seen it time and time again especially in the neighborhoods that are can, are, are growing but residents have been there for 50 plus years and I, and and let's be honest gentrification in Nashville has taken over those areas where um, where minorities have lived. So it needs to be some type of communication that, that respectfully to the community and for a difference to them. Anybody else? Just clarify a couple things for me from the applicant. The, the width of the, the length of the bridge is how long? It's 70 feet, roughly. 70 feet plus or minus if we met the requirement and got it to 75 degrees or more, it would probably be 65 feet. How wide is the, and excuse me, how, how far above the 100 year floodplain is the surface? Uh, it's off the top of my, it's at least a foot. I mean, we're required to have it a foot above. So we're, we're above the 100 year floodplain with the, with the design, all the design. Okay, thank you. And then for staff, help me clarify the, the the guideline here of requiring, it says SM, SWMMM requires a roadway crossing to be perpendicular plus or minus 15 degrees. What, what, what's driving that? What, what's the purpose of that? Uh, thank you. Uh, so the purpose is that when you go at 90 degrees or within 15 degrees, you'll have less buffer disturbance. So the more acute, obtuse, Whatever the right thing is, uh, the more skewed it is, the more buffer disturbance you'll have. And then one last question for the applicant. The, the variance here is to go an additional 10 degrees beyond the allowable. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Okay, okay. thank you. Yes. Any other comments or questions? Did this require uh, no rise? It did. Yes, it did, and the applicant is working, we're working on with that. FEMA on that. Pardon? Yes. We're wor it will require. It says yes. We're working on that. That no rise. Okay, but we don't have that at this point. Okay, that's correct. And, and I think that's another reason that that's a big reason. That so, we need to, well, yeah. well, I think that I think it says that that's 
if I read that right, there'll be a LOMAR, but it said those are not required at the time. It's just that you know you'll have to get one, which we are working through that. But well, I, I, mean, I, I, think I that hear your, your request, and, and I apologize for underestimating the, the impact, and we, yeah. we're happy to defer this. We see it so much, and I just think that there are a lot of questions you're going to be able to answer. I really believe sure, yeah, that. I, I, and, and I think you have a group of people here that are not opposed to development in general. They just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. And, and I think that they deserve that opportunity to have a discussion. And I think if you do that, it's going to make this a lot, a lot more transparent. Uh, so uh, you're, you are request a deferral then? I, I will, yes, sir. Okay. All right. So do we need a motion on that, Council? Okay. So, uh, how long do you think it would take to, to have a meeting with the community? I mean, okay, we can't do it for 30 days, is that correct? That's, that's my understanding, 30 days at a time, Council. So, what the rule says is at the conclusion of all of the evidence in all cases heard at that hearing session, the committee shall discuss the cases and render decisions in executive session on that date or defer decisions for no longer than 30 days thereafter. Um, however, if the, um, uh, the, the, the way that that is worded is for the protection of the applicant, so, if the appli so that the applicant doesn't have to wait on a delay. But if the applicant re requests a deferral, that 30-day clock does not begin. Is that correct? I, 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 would, I would argue yes. And it's fair to say we don't have all the evidence either. So. That, so. And that may be the case as well. So I'll ask you. How long do you think it will take you to, to be able to have a, a community meeting and come back to us prepared to discuss this? And for clarification for me, mm -hmm. community meeting, is that, do I have to advertise that or is it just me talking with the folks no, back No, I here think we need to have a, you need to have a meeting in that community and let them have an opportunity to ask questions and answer those questions. So that is a, again, I can't I'm, require you to do that. I, I understand, think, but, but I'm asking that's you to do that. That has to be advertised. Like, uh, again, I, I'm, I'm uh, asking from a legal standpoint, is that something that has to be published? So that I, I think what we should do is that whoever was advertised with this application should be included in this. They probably have ability. I know Councilmember Gamble, she's very a good council member. And I'm sure she has the ability to notify other people. So that's what I would suggest that you do, is that you notify at least those that were notified in, in the original notification that you sent out and contact a council member, let her set up a meeting and a time, and she'll advertise it as well. So, yeah, okay. Because if you so I, I just, I, I think in order to do that, I don't know you're gonna be able to do that within 30 days. So it's up to you, but I would, I would, ask you to, to defer this or do y'all meet in December I just want to make sure I'm sure is there we, a, is we, there we a, have yeah we have yeah. Yeah. so yeah. If, if, if we you have would, enough cases if we have one case if you would uh, defer till December that would be awesome I will do that okay yeah. so do we need to make any kind of motion now based yes. upon that yeah. so I would move, I, I move that this be deferred based upon the applicant's request to the first meeting in December at which time he'll, they'll, they'll come back to us. Uh, you know, at that time also, I'd like to see, um, I'm not sure if I'll be here or not. My term's up. But uh, a... Um, Sarasota. Of, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. But uh, uh, a no-rise of some sort. I think we need to see that as well. All right, Chairman? Yes, sir. If by chance, I, I think the committee member Dale said it best, I think the applicant should contact the council member. And she will coordinate the public hearing or uh, public meeting with the uh, citizens. Yeah. If there's a chance that they don't be able to come back uh, and get it set up by December, unless legal says otherwise, we could probably work at staff level and see when's the appropriate time. Right. And then if it's December 2nd, the time that they were supposed to come, unless somebody objects, we could just let you guys know, guys, female, the committee members know at the... Um, at other items in business or something. Yeah. And all that was in your motion, right, Roy? I can modify it or if I need okay. to. So, right. so I'm gonna, I'm gonna modify motion. I guess it's not been seconded yet. So uh, yeah. Yeah, if you just restate your motion. I'm gonna say great. basically that uh, the committee uh, is accepting a deferral on this from the applicant of no less than 16. December, the first meeting of December and if the Caplican is not prepared at that time with staff that that meeting could occur at a later date and that you be prepared to come back with um, 
a response from uh, community input, and a no rise. Yeah. So, right. Everybody that's my motion. motion. All right. we, have, we have a motion and a second. All right. Any further discussion, amendments to the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Motion passes. Thank you. And uh, please be thorough about it so you won't have a crowd. If, if, please be thorough about it. And, and you won't have as big a crowd next time. Thank you. Okay. All right. Can't guarantee you have no crowd, can we? <laughs> We've seen it all. all right. What else do we have? Okay. Okay. We've never done that before. Okay, so we've got we've got one item of business to take care of of the adoption of the 2022 Stormwater Management Committee meeting dates, and um, do we have a calendar attached somewhere? There is a calendar. Uh, it's SWMC 2022 meeting date. Is it pretty much the first Thursday? Right? It's always the first Thursday. Okay. Okay. Um, there's four meetings. Steve may have to help me. That will not be in this room potentially. Just because of voting. What date of July do you have right now? July is the seventh. Okay, that's the day after my birthday. Okay, it's a big birthday present. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> you gonna call me from Sarasota? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. So I guess we need a motion. All right. Does everybody want to meet in 2022? <laughs> 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 On these dates? I'll make a motion to approve the 2022 meeting schedule as presented. All right. We have a motion. I have a second. I have a second. All right. Motion's been made with a second. Do we have any discussion? Amendments? Seeing none, all, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Do we have any other business we need to know about? Okay, all right. Logan, do you remember how many cases we have for next month? There are no cases. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was, and I guess we're at the 30-day mark, too, yeah. so, they won't, so we won't have a meeting next month. All right, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. All right, so we have a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All right. We've had a motion to adjourn. A second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. We're adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.